Hey folks, in this video, I wanna share how I passed every station in the MRCS Part B exam during my F2 year while working as a doctor and deep dive into how I prepared for the MRCS Part B as it can be tricky knowing where to start. Now, the MRCS Part B was one of the toughest exams that I prepared for as a doctor. And while written exams are scary, in-person practical exams like the MRCS Part B can be pretty terrifying. No one likes to be put on the spot and have their knowledge questioned directly. And it can be tough knowing how to prepare effectively for practical exams, especially if English isn't your first language. I'm gonna walk you through my evidence-based revision strategy for the MRCS Part B so that you can pass the MRCS Part B first time. So let's get into things, starting off with what Part B actually is. So the MRCS Part B exam is the second and final exam required to gain membership of the Royal College of Surgeons. And this can be at any of the four Royal Colleges in England, Glasgow, Edinburgh, or Ireland. The MRCS in general tests the knowledge, experience, and clinical competencies expected of trainees at the end of their core surgical training. Now, while the MRCS Part A is a written paper, Part B is an objective structured clinical exam, or OSCE, similar to the practical OSCE exams used in medical school finals, which are comprised of a series of stations in a circuit around which you rotate. Candidates must have passed Part A of the MRCS before they can take Part B. In order to be eligible for the MRCS exam, you need to have a medical degree, and it's essential that this is deemed acceptable by either the UK General Medical Council or the Medical Council in Ireland, so you can be fully provisionally or temporarily registered. Candidates have four attempts in which to pass their intercollegiate MRCS Part B OSCE and must successfully complete this within seven years of passing their Part A. Now, applications for Part B of the MRCS can be submitted through each of the rural colleges. In total, there are four colleges where you can complete an application. So how much does Part B cost? Well, close your ears if you wanna hear the bad news. The MRCS Part B is one of the most expensive exams that you can sit. It costs around thousand pounds just to sit the exam, and then there's the cost of online question banks and in-person mock OSCE courses, which can set you back a further 500 to thousand pounds. There are usually three MRCS Part B exam sittings in the UK and Ireland each year, in February, May, and October, with international dates varying. Exams are held at hospitals and simulation centers around the world in clinical environments with real and simulated patients. The MRCS Part B OSCE consists of 17 examine stations. Each station is nine minutes long, and there's an additional one minute for reading the task instructions before the station starts, and one minute for moving between stations at the end. There may also be rest or preparation stations within the circuit, but these are not scored or examined. In total, the exam takes about three and a half hours. You'll rotate clockwise around each of the stations in the circuit, and will be guided by an examiner on the day. As it's a long exam, there's usually a break between circuits, with a 15 minute rest between each circuit where you're under exam conditions. At each individual station, you'll be required to undertake a clearly defined task. In the MRCS Part Bioski, these may include taking a focused history or clinical exam, interpreting an x-ray or performing a simulated practical procedure. At the start of each station, there are instructions for the candidate, which briefly outline the scenario and describe the task that you need to undertake. Stations are manned by one or two examiners who score the candidate using a set marking scheme that we'll look at shortly. The various stations examine the applied knowledge and applied skills of each candidate, and these are divided up into four broad content areas. Firstly, applied knowledge, which consists of eight stations and is broken down into anatomy and surgical pathology, consisting of five stations, and applied surgical science and critical care, which is three stations. And then there's applied skills, which is nine stations in total, divided up into clinical and procedural skills, which is five stations, and communication skills, which is four stations, and which comprises history taking and giving and receiving information. Now the MRCS Part B syllabus, which I'll put a link to below, has a full scoring matrix as we can see here. The scoring matrix shows the breakdown of stations, scoring, domains, and even the number of examiners required per station. So let's have a look at scoring in a little bit more detail. Each MRCS Part B station is marked out of a total of 20 marks on a structured mark scheme. And in addition, candidates will be awarded a separate overall global rating for the station as fail, borderline, or pass based on the judgment of the examiners at that station. The eight applied knowledge stations of anatomy, surgical pathology, 
and surgical science and critical care give a score out of 160 marks, and then the nine applied skill stations give a score out of 180. The MRCS Part B syllabus gives the exact marking sheet which the examiners use. Now to pass the MRCS Part B, you need to pass both the applied knowledge and applied skills content area, and the passing mark for each is set after the exam based on the difficulty of your specific exam that you sat. This is because the Part B stations can vary between test centres and the pass mark is personalised to your day and exam circuit rather than being a fixed generic percentage for fairness. If we look at some of the data from the exam board for Part B, we can see that around 70% of candidates pass at each sitting and you need to pass roughly 70% or more of the stations in applied knowledge and applied skills meaning if you fail one or two stations, you can still pass Part B overall. So when should you actually sit Part B? Well, the Royal College of Surgeons suggests sitting the MLCS Part B in core surgical training year two, but lots of people sit it earlier, as CST2 is when you want to be focusing on surgical specialty job interviews. If you look at some research published in the BMJ in 2017, that surveyed successful candidates between 2008 and 2016, it shows that pass rates were highest for those sitting in core surgical training year one. Now, I sat my MRCS Part B in the first rotation of my F2 year. I'd sat the Part A earlier in the same year, and doing it soon after it made sense to get it out of the way, plus I'd had some good surgical rotations before that. In my opinion, you want to have built up enough clinical experience to make picking up signs and symptoms as easy as possible. The MRCS Part B, like any OSCE or in-person medical exam, doesn't just test your knowledge, but also tests your practical skills and your communication skills, which can be more difficult to improve compared to revising for a written exam like the Part A, where you can just jump in and do loads of questions in a question bank. The level of difficulty for the MRCS Part B can be greatly reduced by ensuring that you're fully prepared for the exam. This means having a solid understanding of the syllabus as well as being familiar with the format of the exam itself. It's also important to make use of resources such as textbooks, practice questions, and more to consolidate your knowledge. Revision courses can be extremely beneficial as they provide you with an opportunity to test your knowledge and identify any areas that require further revision. Unlike written exams, practical exams and OSCEs require you to actually practice your clinical skills, history taking, and communication. So in addition to learning knowledge, you need to move up Bloom's taxonomy of learning and be able to actually explain things in clear terms and then perform tasks like suturing or analyzing results such as examination findings and then describe your management plan. I used a mix of the MLCS syllabus, textbooks, videos, question banks, and mock exams, as well as doing lots of preparation with colleagues and in skill centers, and I felt really well prepared when it came to the exam. Now, the best place to start your preparation is the MRCS syllabus, which is a useful resource for candidates. Within the syllabus, there are several sections that provide candidates with helpful information. These include a background and overview of the MRCS Part B exam, as well as the recommended textbooks that candidates can base their revision and preparation on. Now, the syllabus also indicates the topics and skills that might be examined in Part B. But the final section of the syllabus is dedicated purely to the MRCS Part B and is the most useful with some sample questions. Going through a range of practice questions allows you to determine a response to each of the scenarios that are likely to come up. And in this end part of the syllabus, the example questions go into real detail and feature not only the scenarios, but also the mark schemes and even the patient briefs used in the exam, so it's very transparent. Now, once you understand the format and the mark scheme for the exam, it's time to try and get hold of as many practice papers as possible. While there are no formal past papers as such, like you might find for written exams, there are often lists of stations passed down by previous candidates. Speaking to your peers who sat the exam recently is absolutely essential here, and they'll often have a load of past stations that have been shared with them from previous years. The actual exam itself uses a bank of questions created by consultants, and so the more past stations that you can find out about, the better you'll be. There are a limited number of possible stations that come up, and if you can narrow these down further, it will then make your time spent revising that much more efficient. Now, I'll add a link below to some of the most common stations in the comments below too that I have to really try and help you out. Now, one of the big problems with Part B is knowing how to balance practicing skills like history taking and surgical skills and going over the required knowledge to be able to answer the actual questions. Luckily, there are a number of books and online resources that cover everything from anatomy and applied sciences to surgical examination. The best books use active recall in the form of anatomy spot tests and Viber style questions where you can cover the answer and then reveal it and test yourself. I'd suggest grabbing as many of these books as possible, either buying them off Amazon where they'll set you back about 30 pounds or by picking them up secondhand 
from past candidates or on eBay, well, they'll come much cheaper. There are also a few available to download on PDF, but you'll need to do some digging to find these. I used Basic Sciences for the MRCS, which I used for Part A as a general reference book, and I also used Logan's Illustrated Human Anatomy as a larger anatomy reference guide, which has actual cadaveric images rather than just diagrams. The testing books I used were the doctor exam books, which are huge, but have some really good images. I also used Simon Oberstall's MRCS Anatomy book, which features lots of spot tests, and I also used applied surgical vibers and critical care vibers, which basically ask vibers style questions and come with comprehensive answers. Now, when I passed my MSCS Part B, my publishing company also published lots of updated books covering everything from anatomy to clinical examination and even communication scenarios when there were so few resources out there. So do check those out if you're worried about how to prepare for communication stations in particular. While books are really helpful and you should definitely be getting through as many questions as possible, videos of examination, anatomy, history taking and surgical skills are essential for quickly and efficiently understanding some of the subtleties required to do well on the practical parts of the exam. Ackland's anatomy videos are excellent as they're cadaveric and are easy to watch although they are a little bit dated in terms of their video quality. There are also some great YouTube channels like Anatomy Zone for learning anatomy. Although many of these like Teach Me Anatomy are just illustrations rather than cadaveric models, which is what we really need for the spot tests and gives you the best understanding. YouTube itself is also great for surgical skills and history taking and exams, and a quick search will show you a lot of good examples. I also went back over my basic surgical skills course videos, which cover everything needed for the practical skill stations. In addition to books and videos, there are also some excellent online resources with banks of spot anatomy spot tests, example questions, and videos to help you prepare. The most popular of these being MRCS Part B questions and Pass the MRCS. While both EMRCS and Pass tests, which you may have used for the MRCS Part A, also have Part B resources too. So let's take a look at each in turn and find out which is best suited to you. So MRCS Part B questions has the most MRCS Part B questions out there with over three and a half thousand to practice. It's pretty unique as it has interactive cadaveric anatomy questions and a focus on high quality answers to both anatomy and basic science questions, which are usually the hardest part of the Part B exam. The resource has simulated clinical cases and a nice interface that works on mobile, although there is no mobile app or way to access the resources offline. It's fairly cost efficient with three, six and 12 month options available. Pass the MRCS on the other hand is very expensive as it includes a year's subscription to Ackland's Video Atlas, which many people will already have access to, especially if you used it for Part A. The questions are a little bit less realistic compared to MRCS Part B questions, and the interface is a little bit more basic, but it does have some really good questions and answers, so it's worth a look if you can't find a free version of Ackland's Atlas anywhere else. EMRCS has a very basic Part B question bank, with around a thousand clinical images and some good explanations, is its low price, where it's just 35 pounds for four months and 50 for six months. Pass test, on the other hand, comes in at the most expensive for part B prep, but does feature clinical videos and anatomy videos from Prof. Harold Ellis. The questions aren't that reflective of the actual exam. However, if you're happy with your basic surgical skills videos and Ackland's anatomy videos, this might be a little bit overpriced. The final resource to touch on for part B is courses. Now, I'm not a huge fan of passive lecture-based courses for Part B, but paying to go on a practical mock OSCE can hugely speed up your preparation and identify your weak areas. There are a number of courses out there, some with pure anatomy and others that are mocks. I personally attended a mock MRCS Part B course at the Royal College of Surgeons Edinburgh, which cost around 500 pounds, which I found helpful as an F2, as it was a pure mock, so it helped to simulate the real exam and I felt way more prepared on the day. The Edinburgh course also featured cadaveric anatomy specimens and real patients, and I used my study budget to cover it. There are some courses that are online only, and some that are just knowledge-based, and in my opinion, these are a little bit of a waste of time, and if you want to do a course, doing a mock course is the best use of your time and study budget. Now, one of the most common questions is how long should you revise for the MRCS Part B? Well, I spent around four to six months preparing around my day job during F2, and similar to Part A, I tried to do a few hours around my day job rather than cramming things in. I've known people who've dedicated a full year to revising, booking the exam well in advance, and also a few people who cram things and get it done in less than three months. The main reason it can take a while to feel confident is that it's important to practice your clinical skills and see clinical cases. If you're in core surgical training, this aspect will be a little bit quicker than if you're doing it during foundation training, 
when you might have limited access to surgical patients. I use the syllabus and break down the stations into revision weeks and then aim to do a set number of Viva questions from the testing books and online question banks. I was usually aiming for around 25 to 50 questions each day and if I was on call, I'd skip a day and then make up the questions I'd missed at weekends. I'd have my reference books ready to go on my desk at home and I teamed up with friends who were sitting the exam at the same digest and we went over and over examination and talking through the answers with one of us holding a test book or using MRCS Part B questions to quiz the others. This, in my opinion, is the best way to do it, as you need to be able to explain things vocally in a concise and confident manner. We also timed ourselves, and one of my friends bought some suturing kits from Amazon, which I'll put a link to in the description down below, so that we could practice our suturing, excisions, and knot tying alongside our basic surgical skills videos. We also booked out our hospital skills lab and practiced there too. So practice really does make perfect. Now, how difficult is the Part B exam? Well, while Part A has a pass rate of about 40%, the highest recorded pass rate for the MRCS Part B is 75%, and more candidates tend to pass Part B than they do for Part A. However, you only get four attempts to complete Part B, whereas with Part A, you get six opportunities, so it can seem a little bit scarier, plus it costs way more to resit the exam. The difficulty in which you find MRCS Part B will largely depend on how well you prepare. While knowledge is an integral part of MRCS Part B preparation, making use of the right exam technique is crucial. Therefore, it's important that you learn how to extract and present your knowledge in response to each question asked by the examiners. And practicing communication skills can be really tough. One of the main skills that you'll be assessed on during Part B is your ability to communicate. You'll be assessed on your ability to explain surgical procedures as well as give concise and well-organized answers. Effective communication is an essential skill for surgeons as it allows you to effectively convey complex information to patients, families, and other members of the healthcare team. If English isn't your first language, or even if it is, it's vital to practice giving answers in a concise and confident manner in order to improve. People often leave out practicing communication station scenarios but it's really, really important to grab a surgical communication book or resource where a friend can pretend to be the patient and you can practice just like you would any other station. So what did I learn from passing Part B? Well, I sat the MRCS Part B in Coventry Hospital, which is a few hours away from where I lived in Bristol at the time. I got a good night's sleep before the exam and drove over on the day. When you get to the venue, they'll check your identity and then they'll show you to the circuits where you have to wait under exam conditions until the bell signals to start and you can read the instructions for your first station. For me, I started on anatomy first and was asked the structures of the chest and gluteal region on separate stations. All of the stations were fair, some were very much as expected, and overall the basic science questions were more challenging, which is what everyone found on the day. I'd revised pretty well as the exam was so expensive I didn't want to have to resit it, and if you followed the advice in this video, you'll likely do pretty well. Now, I hope you found this video useful in your exam preparation. Do let me know if you have any specific questions about the MRCS Part B in the comments below, and I'll put up some links to similar videos in the end cards, which you might wanna check out to help you improve your soft skills and your overall revision strategy. Thanks so much for watching. Do hit that subscribe button for more videos like this, and I'll catch you again in the next one.